Today's blog post and hopefully the next several blog posts are going to focus a bit more on pedagogy and I want to focus on the trends in the pedagogy that are occurring here in America, probably elsewhere as well, the efforts that people are trying to make in reforming education, reforming education practices. What I want to do is I want to tie some of that into a discussion of pedagogy that might be relevant to EFL teachers in Japan. And I think that this is really important for a number of reasons. Everybody needs to take pedagogy seriously. And what I see in America is that even though in a lot of ways we're still losing, we're still failing to reach the underprivileged. A common phrase that comes up is this is the civil rights issue of our generation. Even though that's what's going on. Amongst the folks that are really in the trenches, really trying to solve these problems, I see real professionalism and I see real steady and enduring inquiry into what's working and what's not working. So today's blog post focused on exit tickets. Exit tickets are a way of finishing your lesson with an event that gathers data about how each of your kids is doing vis-a-vis -vis what you're trying to teach. It is a diagnostic assessment um, and it's a way of making a diagnostic assessment routine so that it doesn't get confused with your coercive assessments. But definitely a big reason why I want to uh, talk about exit tickets um, is that it's something that could definitely be added to most teachers work in Japan. There's a lot of going into class, being happy with how the class went because the vibe in the class was good and that's all we care about. What you gotta do is you gotta make sure that you get some information back that tells you whether or not you're meeting some pedagogical objectives. Otherwise, what you're doing is you're being a clown. And I think um, what I wanna do is I wanna break it into three parts. In advance of your class, how do you conceptualize uh, the role that the exit ticket is going to play in your lesson and uh, how you're going to design the exit ticket? Another probably separate blog post is during. How do you set up an exit ticket? What do you do in class to make sure that the exit ticket plays the right role? Uh, how do you prevent a lesson from being governed by an exit ticket in such a way that you actually confine your pedagogy so that you don't have an expansive growing class that leaves room for student initiative. So that's during. And then after, really making sure that when you, res you, know, when you collect the data um, from the students in the, in the form of an exit ticket, uh, how you use it properly, you know, what you do with the information that you gather um, from an exit ticket. A fourth one would be the issue of technology. And I think what's really interesting is that there was much more technology available to me uh, in the context of the charter school where I was working um, than is generally the case in Japanese schools where I have worked or where my teachers have worked. Um, but even so, the technological limitations that exist in both charter schools and Japanese schools are enough to severely impact what's really possible with exit tickets. What you really want is an online environment where there's so much connectivity that you can just be constantly gathering data about how the kids are grasping what you're doing. I'm conflicted about exactly how much positive stuff and how much negative stuff I want to say. Uh, because my experiences at the charter school are so raw, I'm worried that I'm going to give the impression that oh, nothing ever worked, and oh my gosh, these people are terrible, and they're not. We should be kissing their feet. I think I say that somewhere in one of the blog entries that I've made. They are fighting a fight that the rest of us shrink from. We should admire them, and we should learn as much as we can from them, because they are taking on problems that, to be honest, the rest of us are afraid to take on, all right? They're learning stuff that the rest of us are not learning because we're not in the trenches that they're in, all right? They are losing 
in ways that we cannot possibly lose because the cards are not stacked against us in the way that things are stacked against them, right? However, if I were starting a company and I had to choose a random bunch of people to start that company with, that's the pool of folks that I'd choose from. I'm just saying. I love my company. Got good people here. They're getting better and better and better and better. But we need to look around and see the expert practitioners that exist all over the world and have the humility it takes to really learn from them.